Hey guys, Jordan Boostmaster here. Finally, finally, my downhill bike is ready. I'm sorry it took so long. I was kind of teasing you guys, especially on Instagram for a while, and I really do apologize for that because it was not supposed to take this long, but some things are just outside of my control, you know, just waiting for parts, waiting for this and that, and uh, I don't know, there's not much I could do. And man, I'm so excited to share this with you guys. This is my Rocky Mountain Maiden. So this is not a sponsored frame or anything, I bought it myself, and as far as why I chose the Rocky Mountain Maiden, well, this goes back a few years actually. I posted a video demoing a Rocky Mountain Maiden during Crankworks back in 2018. I had a really good time on it, even though it was a very short-lived ride, since the rear tire popped. But something about that bike just felt so right to me, and in addition to that, I really liked how the geometry was looking on paper. Plus, another big factor for me is the fact that you can easily put 26 inch wheels on this thing and keep the geometry exactly the same. There are two axle holes in the rear for 26 inch or 27.5. And for the front, there's a cup that you can put under the head tube to raise the front end up if you want to put 26 inch wheels on it. This is the kind of stuff I like to see. This is a 2019 frame. Now unfortunately, Rocky Mountain decided to discontinue the Maiden in 2020. So I was actually having a bit of a hard time finding a maiden frame. I didn't want to buy anything used though. And so I was trying to call up different stores to see if they had it in stock and it was actually pretty hard to find. Plus, this thing brand new costs almost $5,000 Canadian, which is ridiculous. But I did end up finding a good deal on Pinkbike for this maiden frame. I got it for $2,500 and it was unused. It was really just built up and then torn down and never really ridden. So I'm pretty happy with this find. Now since I did buy it off of someone, there were a couple things installed already, such as it already had a bottom bracket installed and some shift cable housing. For this build, I am so stoked to tell you guys that Shimano hooked me up with a full Saint group set, so I am so happy about that. This is going to make my bike so prime. And Marzocchi hooked me up with suspension for not just this bike, but also my enduro bike that I am putting together very soon as well. So I've been really curious about what a mullet bike is going to be like and a lot of you guys were saying I should try it as well. So I'm going to take a 26 inch rim from my stash as well as a suitable tire. Now Shimano doesn't make a rear hub in 157mm width so I just bought myself a DT Swiss 350 hub. I've never tried DT before so I'm excited to see how I like this one. For the front wheel I bought a Spank Race 33 rim and that's laced to a Shimano Saint hub. So these are my wheels with the rear 26 inch Sunringle MTX33 and my front 27.5 wheel. The rear tire is a Maxxis Minion DHR2 Max Grip, that's got a tube in it. And the front is a Maxxis Asagai Max Grip, that one's set up tubeless. So what is actually the overall difference in diameter between these wheels? Well it seems about an inch and a quarter if I'm looking at this straight. I'm getting my friend Ben to come over and help me build this bike up since I'm not much of a bike mechanic. But before that, I will get a few things set up first. I'll stick on a census seat. It's the same kind that you've seen on my Sky Pilot and I liked it so much I thought I'd put it on this bike as well. Next I'll stick on the Shimano chain guide. It came with some different sized spacers and I opted to put one of the thicker kind on for now since I was realizing if it was too close to the frame and also rotated back a bit the chainstay would end up hitting the upper guide. So I had to spend a bit of time figuring out the correct placement for this. And now there's some good clearance from the chainstay, so I'm pretty happy with this. As I mentioned before, the Maiden comes with this cup that you can install under the head tube here in case you want to install 26 inch wheels. Now, as I said, I will be putting a 27.5 wheel on here, so I don't need this right now. However, I need to stick this on temporarily so we can measure the steer tube of my fork to make sure it's going to be long enough for both setups. Because yes, I will be riding this bike as a full 26 inch setup later on this year. But first, I gotta try out the mullet bike. And eventually, after I try both setups, I'll be able to figure out what I like more. As we started the build, we encountered our first problem. The crown race was the wrong size. The hole looks big. Oh, you're right. I don't know if that's gonna work, man. Shoot, I, I didn't realize that. What you might need a why is that now? you need a reducer for the inch and eight steer. It was for the inch and a half tapered steer tube, and this is an inch and an eighth steer tube, so we can't install the fork yet. Now I called my local shop, but they didn't have it in stock 
so they had to order it in. For now, we can still place the crown race on it temporarily so we can at least measure the steer tube and cut it to the proper length. So we can still put it on and mark it and cut, cut it. the tube yeah, and do all that. The bearing still rests on that, right? Yeah. It's the same stack, it's just you can't center your steer tube yeah. for proper use. So. Right on. So now we know what it's going to look like with the whole 26 inch setup with that extended head tube. There's enough room for everything to fit so that is great. And we'll mark off a spot to cut off that steer tube and it just means that for the 27.5 setup, the steer tube is going to be longer than it needs to be, but that's okay. I mean, it goes back to the uh, old rule. You can always cut more off later, you can't glue it back on. So yeah, when we put the stem on, I'm going to actually have some spacers raising. Uh, yeah. So for this build, I'm going with a Deity intake stem and a Deity race point handlebar with a 38mm rise. This will be my first time trying out these Deity bars, so they should be pretty sweet. Five to seven millimeters is the correct depth for a star nut. Okay. Below the top edge. Okay. So. It's important that you get the same gap on both sides and it's not squishing on one end because that's not right. You tighten the cross on a 45, so you go boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Since Shimano sent me a whole Saint group set for this bike, that means I got all the best high-end parts like the Saint Ice Tech rotors, Saint brakes, Saint derailleur shifter, Saint cranks, everything you could really want. So I am so thankful. Big thank you to Shimano. And then we encountered our second problem of the day. Bottom bracket isn't spaced out correctly for the light of the spindle. For real? The cranks were not lining upright. The drive side would go in too far. If I tap this in all the way, I'll just tap it in. <laughs> it's like rubbing against, what is it rubbing against? Something. It's, like it's rubbing against your guide. We were trying to see if I really had the right crank size or the right bottom bracket. So with those problems, we kind of just gave up for today on the build, <laughs> which really sucks. So we're just doing the partial build for today, boys. We put on the rear brakes at least, but I mean, otherwise we're gonna have to continue this later. It'll look nice and clean like that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just... And with the hookup I got from Marzocchi, they provided me a Marzocchi Bomber CR coil rear shock. Right now I got a 400 pound spring on it, so we'll see how that feels. And the fork, of course, as you can see, was a Marzocchi Bomber 58. It's got nice thick 40 mil stanchions. This thing definitely looks beefy and I'm pretty stoked on it. So when it comes to the issue of my cranks there and the whole spacing issue there, I talked to my local bike shop about it and they gave me these little shim spacers and that actually seemed to fix the whole problem. So this little spacer is a millimeter and a half, they gave me two of them, I put them both on the drive side and now the chain ring can spin freely and has good clearance from that chain guide. I got my local shop to install the whole drivetrain for me. So I actually ended up getting a crown race off of my friend since my shop had to put it on back order and honestly, we have no idea when we were supposed to see that. I'm sticking on a couple of marsh guards here to protect from the mud. It was a bit trickier to figure out the rear fender because I couldn't use the existing holes. So I cut in a couple new ones. Well, finally, the bike is actually rideable. It's probably been about three weeks from when we started building it to now. All that's left to do is a few touch-ups. The pedals I'm gonna be putting on here are straight line de facto pedals. 
These are older pedals and I don't think they're really made anymore, but they're really strong and they're also some of the heaviest pedals I've ridden, but I don't really care. I used them before and they'll last a good two to three years. I actually have this gold colored chroma C clamp, so I actually think I should put that on. Okay, how about that? I think that is kind of cool actually. I just like how the yellow goes with the, uh, the green. I think that's pretty nice. So one thing I'm always interested in doing is slamming my seat down as far as possible. So that means I need to figure out how much can I cut my seat posts while still giving clearance to the rear wheel so it doesn't hit my seat when I bottom out. All right, so as you can see, with the shock out of it completely, the seat does not actually hit the tire as it is now. And honestly, I think this is even lower than it would be when you bottom out. So I think when you bottom out, it might be even higher than this anyway, but I can definitely lower the seat. Looks like this marsh guard might be the only thing getting in the way. So I'm just cutting off two inches off the seat post now. I'm just gonna file it off and then sand it a bit so there's no burrs, and then check on the clearance. If I had a 27.5 wheel here, it would probably touch the seat right there. So it's pretty nice having that smaller wheel and also in that lower axle, I can definitely get more clearance, which is awesome. You know what? I think that's perfect. Okay guys, one random thing here. I was about to put on a new seat on my hardtail here, my Dimeback Sinker hardtail, and I got this black SDG Apollo seat here. I think it was gonna be sweet on my hardtail, but then I realized, actually, I think it might be better on my Maiden, because I never really was totally sure about this red seat. I can put the red seat on my hardtail while just going all black for this seat. All right, there we go. Got the red sense of seat on my hardtail. I think it actually looks pretty cool. And then we got the black seat on my Maiden. Sweet. So the Maiden has what's called a Ride 4 chip. So that means it has four geometry options. One being the lowest and slackest and four being the highest and steepest. So you can see here, I have it in the highest and steepest setting. So the head angle right now is about 64 degrees. Now that's about the same as my slackest setting in my DaVinci Wilson. So this is perfectly comfortable geometry for me. And by the way, while we're comparing the Wilson here, the chainstay length on this bike is 425 millimeters, while the Wilson is 427 or 430 in its different settings. So this bike even has a shorter chainstay, plus the same 26 inch wheel. It's all very familiar to me. And I also wanted to compare it a bit to the Evolve Sky Palette that I've been riding for the past year because this Rocky Mountain Maiden is very much in between the 26 inch Wilson and the Sky Pilot. And by that I'm referring to all the geometry numbers such as head angles, wheelbase, even wheel size. I mean I literally have a 26 inch and 27.5 wheel. So while the 26 inch Wilson was so good for free ride and jumps, and then the Evolve Sky Palette was really good on the tech and the steeps. The Maiden is now right in between the best of both worlds. One thing about me is I always love to play around with color on my bikes. I love colorful bikes. I love playing around with color coordination and just having fun with the colors. So with this bike so far, I think I may want to do a couple little changes. I'll tell you what my idea was here. The idea was because I knew that I was going to get red lowers for my fork. I didn't have a choice in that. And because I knew the frame had orange lettering, didn't really have any choice in that. I thought I might play around with sort of like a red to orange to yellow look. Sort of like a, some kind of a gradient red, orange, yellow. Similar to how my DaVinci Wilson has that gradient. But I am planning on actually changing some of the graphics here. Like this orange for example, I would like to change into red to match the fork. And this Maiden I would like to change into yellow to match say the fender and just go well with the green. As far as the Rocky Mountain text here, I could either keep that orange or one idea I had was to make a custom graphic where it would go red to orange to yellow gradient. Again, mimicking how my DaVinci Wilson was. I mean, another simple option is just change all the graphics into red and then just change all the other components into red, like change the mud guards into red. I don't know. That's just sort of the simple route. But I'd much prefer to find a way to make all the colors work, the red, orange, yellow, and green. Also, since it's not like a sponsored bike or anything, I could cover up the text anyway, like I could black that out or just do any kind of custom graphic I want on the whole bike. I could, I can get it painted at some point, which maybe I will down the road, but otherwise for now, I'll just get some custom graphics for it to change it up a little bit. 
Well you guys, I'm super excited to ride this thing. It's a bike I've been wanting to have for a while now and I finally got it, it's finally built up. So, so stay tuned, we're gonna have a lot of fun with this bike this year. Thank you guys so much for watching. I am so excited to be riding my new bike this year. This is gonna be amazing. I gotta give a huge thank you to all my patrons on Patreon. They really keep my channel going. And I even got some really fun video projects planned for this year. So stay tuned for some pretty cool content coming out in the near future. Thanks everyone, see you guys next time.